Hi, my name is Kevin Ranke. I'm a sergeant with the St. Paul Police Department, and I'm also its department historian. Right now, we're standing in front of the main entrance to the St. Paul Police Department, and we're by some of our historical displays. I don't know if you've noticed in the past year that all of our police officers are wearing this replica of our first St. Paul Police badge, this six-pointed star. This is our 150th year of being a police department, as is for the city of St. Paul being 150 year anniversary. Right now, I'm going to take you on a tour of some of our historical items. And welcome to our St. Paul Police Museum. This is on the second floor of our headquarters building. And I'll just take you around and look at some of our uh, historical items on display. Right here is our uh, workhouse van or Black Mariah from 1897. We received this from a, uh, a collector and uh, the city, all of the names on this board here, uh, donated to purchase this so the St. Paul Police Department could have it back. We do take it out for parades. Over here we have some displays of uh, weapons used by the St. Paul Police Department in our history and also uh, handcuffs and these leather looking items are called saps and inside those leather items is lead. Officers would put their hand in there and have it in the palm of their hand and would hit people. That was one of the ways that the officers uh, in the older days uh, apprehended suspects. Back in the old days uh, the city, the citizens of St. Paul were uncomfortable seeing uh, people in the city walking around in uniforms because a uniform to them meant military and like a military state. But due to the Civil War, the citizens became more comfortable seeing officers in uniforms. So that's when the police department started to wear uniforms. But prior to that, officers would just wear their star badge on their civilian clothes. Right here is an old uh, bullet resistant vest. You can see if you, we open it up here, you can see the different uh, uh, ammunition used, 45 caliber, 357 Magnum, 38 caliber. This weighs uh, 21 pounds, 21 and a half pounds to be exact. If you look at it, it's an actual vest that investigators would use, or detectives in the old days. And they would put this on before they would go in to interview John Dillinger or whoever was at the time. But at 21 pounds, it weighs quite a bit. It's very uncomfortable. The school police started in St. Paul by uh, Sister M. Carmela. Out of, she was a teacher at the cathedral school. This was a sign in the old days. Now, of course, they carry the flags uh, when they have the kids cross the street. Over here, we have medals of valor. It says up here, gallantry and valor at imminent personal hazard to life. So these are some of the officers that have, have received that award. On this side here, Medals of Merit, and this is for um, officers uh, that have done something uh, unusual uh, in their police service uh, that's extraordinary, above and beyond the call. And this was the old 1900s uniform with the Bobby style hat. The word Bobby comes from Sir Robert Peel, Robert Bobby, uh, in England, who started law enforcement and uh, they named that hat after him. Believe it or not, St. Paul Police used to wear this green uniform and it was uh, approximately 1964 that we went to the current uniform that I'm wearing now where that we have the light blue uh, color. Behind me here is an example of a police siren. This was mounted on the passenger front fender of the St. Paul Police squads until about approximately 1971 on our squad cars. In the wintertime, when they turned that siren on, they'd sometimes have to roll down their window and take their nightstick and keep tapping that siren because it kept freezing up. This here is a, an old uh, meter, as it were. It's called the Drunko meter. It's a meter to measure a person's intoxication from alcohol. Banks or stores, when they have a robbery, they would put this bundle of money along with the other bundles of money and inside is a die pack and I think you've heard that sometimes on uh, news programs where they talk about a die exploding in the hands or in a, a bag 
which was being carried by the robber. There's trip plates, there are uh, plates inside a uh, cash register that automatically radio what's happening to the communication center. Now we don't really need that any longer because we have the 911 system and it, even if someone is injured and cannot speak after they dial 911, the police department knows exactly where that call is coming from. We did have police surgeons, one that drove around in a station wagon with two police officers in the day shift and one at night. Um, this was prior to our current paramedic system. Uh, police officers were trained in basic first aid, but it was up to the doctor to stabilize at the scene, and then the police officers would transport that uh, victim to the hospital. Uh, and this is the actual bag from one of our surgeons. Of course, this was the way <laughs> that uh, traffic officers stopped traffics at intersections. They stood, this was portable, they can see the two wheels. They wheeled this out to the intersection, and then they stood on this uh, platform and there's a handle here and they would turn it right left as they wanted the, off the cars to go or stop. This is one of my favorite historical pieces in the museum. This is a, a marquee, a, a, a piece that was uh, on top of our 1886 police substation. There were four of these built in 1886 and I don't know if you can see, but in the yellow outline is where this piece actually came from. This is um, sandstone. It weighs about 500 pounds. We had a, one of our police sergeants, uh, Tom Schmidt, build this frame. This is from the Union Park Police Stuff Station. It was at 490 uh, North Pryor Avenue. That building is no longer standing, but thankfully the owner of that building thought enough to cut this piece out before he destroyed the building and saved it for the police department. So we very much appreciate that. Right here is a scale that uh, up until about 10 years ago the St. Paul Police Department used to weigh people that were arrested in Ramsey County for various things. Obviously when somebody gets arrested we fingerprinted them, we got their height and also their weight. Okay, what we have here is the uh, police telegraph system or an also a phone. This is dated 1917 and when officers needed to call uh, the patrol wagon because they had an arrest, this is one of the ways they communicated. We can open that up with an old uh, skeleton key and inside we have one of the old phones and right up here is how we call the wagon. There's a bell on the top. One of our last uh, locations of where these call boxes were located was on Snelling and uh, University. Unique to St. Paul are these Opticon systems. It's the system that uh, allows police and emergency vehicles to go through or to go into intersections that have lights and allows them to turn green for the emergency vehicle. This was one of the first uh, Opticons, and if you can see that liquid substance in there, that's oil. And that's what kept the, uh, the light bulb or the lamp cool. Uh, the next generation, and of course you can see they get rid of the oil, and it's a smaller unit. 3M gave those to St. Paul for free initially because we were kind of a trial to see how, what worked and what didn't work. And this is a picture of uh, a former chief, Chief John J. O'Connor. He was St. Paul's longest tenured chief. He had two different terms uh, from 1900 to 1912 and then from 1914 to 1920. 18 total years he, he ran the St. Paul Police Department. He was famous for in the day, in, the, in his tenure, to keep his citizens safe, the citizens of St. Paul, he thought it would be best to uh, make a deal with the criminals or the gangsters and he said that so long as they stay out of trouble and don't commit crimes in the city of St. Paul, the police department will not bother them. Well, that lasted for a short period of time and then it backfired because uh, in the 1930s, as you know, the gangsters caused problems in our neighboring cities and then that brought problems into the city of St. Paul. So that, that system really backfired on him and the city. Okay, this uh, picture on the wall is, is of our St. Paul Police Department. It's dated February 22, 1959. 
This picture was taken in front of the Capitol, and here we have uh, the St. Paul Police Ambulance, a station wagon squad car, some of our canine unit detectives are in plain clothes. What the department is going to do is sell uh, copies of this photograph for $20 to uh, the public and also personnel in the police department. The police museum needs some items to preserve some of our uh, historical pieces, uh, one of which is window tinting on our, on our windows to keep the sun's harmful rays from affecting or damaging the articles. But we are offering that as a way of generating money. So if you are interested, please let the police department know. Again, this is Sergeant Kevin Ranke, St. Paul Police Department historian and I hope you enjoyed our visit through St. Paul's Police History.